Hi everyone, I'm Toluca from Markers and Minions and welcome to today's live video. Sorry, I had to get things up and running. So today I'm going to be talking about all of my benchmark resources that have been made digital for distance learning. I'll show you how to access them because I know that that can be kind of um, challenging. I get at least an email a day saying like, help, I downloaded this, but it doesn't look digital. So I'll show you how to find the digital components of everything. And then I will show you different ways that you can assign these resources on Google Classroom, on Canvas, Schoology, Seesaw. Um, I don't use any of those learning management systems. I'm very familiar in Google Classroom, um, but there are, I know that there are ways to assign these things on the other platforms and I'll show you what you need to do first in order to be able to assign them. Okay, and Microsoft Teams, yes, thank you for reminding me. Okay, so before we get started, I'm going to show share my screen with you. We have a TPT sale today, so a lot of people have been asking about when that's occurring, and it is finally today, it's finally here. So looking at my store, see it up at the top here, you'll see BTS20, that's today's code, so don't forget to put that in when you are checking out. The way TPT works is you set your store to 20% off. That's the most that they're, they allow us to discount our resources. And then if you put in that code, then they take an additional 5% off. Or you can go to markersandminions.com and type in that code BTS20 when you're checking out and you'll get 30% off from my website. All right, um, a couple of tips for navigating, first of all, because I get a lot of questions about where to find things as well. Um, take a look at my store here. So make sure you're following me Woo, right there. And then also on the side here, I've created custom categories that will help you navigate everything because I, I'm kind of crazy. I have a lot of things now at this point. I made these custom categories recently by grade level. So you can click by your grade level or you can filter by selecting whichever benchmark resource you're looking for. So like the close reading companions or the spelling test or whatever those are, they're all right there. And then that's how you would navigate that. Okay, so I think I've gone over what I needed to talk about for the TPT sale and the Marcus Dominion sale. Um, the next question that I get a lot is, are your resources aligned to the new 2021 edition? And before I go into that, let me just, everybody else who's not using benchmark, um, brand new this year, like you've already adopted from California several years ago or the national edition copyright, you know, 2017, 2018, your edition is not changing. The 2021 edition is for brand new adoptions. So one of the benchmark folks told me, think of it like a car, like they update the Honda Civic every year, but then everyone who already has a Honda Civic doesn't necessarily get those same updates, okay? So that's how that works, so don't panic. A lot of people are saying like, oh my God, is mine gonna change? It's not, don't worry. Um, with that said though, the 2021 edition, they made some significant changes and so I have a team of teachers helping me go through and align everything. And this is what is aligned so far. So it's a Google Form spreadsheet here that goes over everything. These are the things that I will be aligning and um, hold on, give me a second, here we go. These are things that I will be aligning. I've finished all of the grade level bundles for grades one through five, and then we're chipping away slowly but surely at the close reading companions. I should have third, third grade unit one, actually, let me check that. I finished that like last night, I think. Fifth grade will be up soon-ish. Same with the planned for me for each of the grade levels. And then um, once these are done, we're gonna circle back and go continue with the close reading companions, units two, units three, units four, and I'll, we'll probably get those done like as we're going throughout the school year. So bear with us there. All right, so I can share this spreadsheet with you all, or you can go to my website, markersandminions.com slash benchmark 2021. Let me zoom in here so you can see that sort of, okay. And um, the spreadsheet is linked here on this website. Okay, so 
do we have to join Ecamm to watch the video? No, you don't. So I'm just broadcasting through Ecamm, but you don't need to join the app. Uh, yes, this video will remain on the Facebook wall or in the, in the group. So if you are busy, Sabrina, you can come back and watch this later. And I'll also put it on my YouTube channel. All right, friends. So let me switch back to me. So I made a list. Let me put it up on my screen here. These right here are the resources that are digital. So back in March, thank you to the people in this group who rallied and helped me digitize everything. We got it done as soon as school closures started. We went through, tons of us went through and added, you know, made digital versions of everything with text boxes ready to assign. So thank you, everybody. So we have the close reading companions. Those are all digital. The word work pamphlets slash booklets, if you're first grade, those are digital. The writing companions, the text-dependent questions, we I may, turn those into, like you have the bookmark still, but then I also turn them into a full page option because that was another thing people wanted more writing space. And then I digitize the full page option. The spelling tests are self-grading Google Forms. And then the unit opener questions, those were always digital, but I just thought I'd throw those up there. All right. Now, here's what it looks like when you download any of these. Let's just say Close Reading Companions. And I actually don't think I have it up on my screen, so give me a second and open it. Um, someone says, so Brent says, if we have the older version of Benchmark and want to purchase an item, will there be a place to check for 2018 or 2021? Um, it's all going to be in the same folder. I'm putting them all together. And I'm, in fact, I'll open this up for you. Hold on, I have a million folders. Let's go to third grade unit one, for example. Let's share this. So this is my, these are all my like, uh, you know, editable files. But when you download something, it will now say that there's a 2021 edition um, or and then this one will either be like California edition or national edition broken up into two separate files or if it originally wasn't created like that because I've created a lot of things just all in one file for California and national it'll just say general no label but the 2021 will have a special label and then yeah like I said I'm just adding it to the existing file so you don't have to like we're, you know, and also if you purchase something now and the 2021 is not there yet, all you'll have to do is re-download later when you notice that it's checked off on that spreadsheet. Now, you see this part here, let me zoom in here, the digital CRC. So a lot, this trips people up a lot of the times because they open this up and they say, wait, where's the digital file? Because they're expecting it to open up on Google Slides. But what I do is I link it, and you can see kind of up close the blue hyperlinks. Those are the links to the digital versions, and you can see teeny tiny there's two links, right? One is for the this guy, California National, and the other one is for 2021. So that's how all of them will look when you download. When you click on these links, this is what it'll look like you'll get a Google Slides version that opens up. First, it'll ask you if you would like to make a copy. Click yes. So that way you get your own copy and you're not editing all of the, the, the original. And then once you make a copy and you have it opened up, do you see, oops, I'm not, I'm zoomed out. Give me a second. Do you see this up here where it has a little folder? When you click on that, you can organize it into your drive. So you can put it, you can place it immediately wherever you're storing it on your drive. Another thing is if you open it up through like your personal email, but then you want to transfer it over to your um, work email, you just either sign out up here and sign back into your like other account and then click on that link again, make another copy or just click share and share it with yourself. So type in your email, your other email, and it will go to your other account. All right, so when you open up any one of these digital resources, you will see that the backgrounds, let's open up like this page, for example, they're flattened, see? So I uploaded them for you 
as background images so that the kids can't click around and uh, mess with any of that. And then there's text boxes layered over where there were, were originally lines, okay? So the kids just have to double tap either with their finger if they're on a tablet or double click and then they can start typing. And then the other, some of these files, for example, these close reading companions have little elements to drag and drop to circle answers. Another one that has that quite a bit are the word work pamphlets. You can see how there are movable pieces. So here's a tip for that. Sometimes the pieces will be off of the slide and uh, occasionally, sometimes when kids open it, they only see this part, this slide. So what they'll have to do is just kind of pinch it to zoom out a teeny bit and then they'll see the pieces off to the sides where they just drag and drop. So I really like using Google Slides because if you take, well, it's really zoomed out, but if you take a look, this whole uh, off the slide area, these ed outer edges are all workable plate spaces. So it's kind of like a mat where you can you can put manipulatives or you know digital manipulatives or like these little fun highlighting strips, okay? So that's how to manipulate and work with these. And let's see, I'm gonna show you what each thing looks like once it's opened, and then I will show you how to assign things. So the CRCs look like this, okay? It's just the whole file there. The spelling tests are self-grading Google Forms. And now these are linked in the, on page two, I wanna say, of the spelling test PDF versions. When you download it, like I said, it's a PDF. You won't see a separate one that says digital links. You'll just see spelling tests. Open that up. Second page will say, click here to, to access the digital tests. So these are Google Form quizzes. They're editable. People are asking me if these are aligned to 2021, and I do have them on my spreadsheet, like with plans of aligning them, but the more I think about it, the more I think like, I made up a lot of this stuff anyway. I focused more on the spelling pattern than in not n more than like the actual set word list. So I'm not sure if I'll go through and do too much updating with this, if there's a word that you know you need changed, you could always just, I don't know, go through and edit however, because it's fully editable. So, and it looks like this for the kids when you assign it. Um, it'll look like this, they just go through, submit, and really that's it. This, they need to be um, either in, this has to be assigned through Google Classroom, or if you're sending them this form to fill out, then they need at least a Google account. So if you're using like um, Canvas or Schoology and you're not, your kids don't have Google email addresses, and I'm just kind of guessing here because I haven't encountered this, but if they haven't, if they don't have their own login, then I believe they can just use any login. I don't even know if they need to be logged in, but they could use just like, mom's email address. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. I'm not sure of the hundred percent on this, but then I have this part here where they type their name. So at least, um, if they're using someone else's account or no Gmail account, which I don't think you could do that way. They'll, their name will be there anyway for you. And then once they submit, you'll click on responses. You'll see like, you know, 32 right here, or however many kids submit. And then you'll see, you'll be able to filter by individual responses or class summary, which is cool. Now the, um, okay, let me answer some questions. Give me just a second. Um, I have the spelling that I used all last year. Great resource. How do I get these to be digital? If you're referring to my spelling tests, just re-download for the latest file and then you'll see that it's been added to slide or page number two, all of the links. Peggy, if I need to re-download to get the digital files, is there a quick way to tell where you bought it, TPT or M&M? <laughs> no, no, sorry, I don't 
change the file based on where it's uploaded. But if you go to your TBT account, click on my purchases, and then I think it gives you the option to, to filter in the search bar. You might be able to just type like spelling tests. And then you can, I would search TPT first since there is that option. And if it doesn't come up there, then I would go to markersandmillions.com, log into your account, and then you'll see them all listed there. Okay. Um, if I purchase the 2019 paper versions of the CRCs, do I have to purchase the digital version? Nope. Free updates. All of the digital um, adaptations are provided as free updates. I want to make distance learning, I mean, as easy as possible, right? And in March, everyone was like, oh my God, what's happening? So I thought, okay, I'm gonna make all of this digital so at least there's a little bit of continuity for the kids. And um, yeah, now you can start the year that way. The spelling tests are not included in any of the bundles. They came later uh, after I had made those bundles, so they're standalone. <sighs> Are the digital resources aligned to 2021? As I'm aligning 2021, I'm also making them digital. Yes. Okay. So these are what the text-dependent questions look like. They use, they're bookmarks, but then I also created these full-page options. So like on the paper versions, move that. It has lines. The digital versions just has, you know, have places to type. The word work pamphlets. So these are... They vary, so for California and national, when we made these in March, when we digitized them, the team of teachers that I was referring to went in and they actually made all the little elements, like the circles, the highlighting strips, and placed them off the side and included like um, text boxes and vocabulary words. When Now that I'm doing the 2021 edition one, I'm actually including a slide at the beginning that says, um, you know, we're, we're all in distance learning now. These kids are going to become tech wizards. So they might as well just learn how to do a line, which is, you know, up here, how to do a shape, okay, and this little tutorial. And that way I have, like, use the line tool to underline. So then they just take the line tool and they, you know, what are my love abstract? And they just do that, okay? So that is how the 2021 pamphlets are a little bit different. The California national ones have all of these little elements included already. The first grade ones are booklets. So they look different than these trifolds, okay? And let's see, the writing companions we made those into full pages. I can't remember if I did that in March during the digital conversion or if I did that before, but the writing booklets also come as full pages now. And then we took the full pages and we digitized them. These files are crazy now, guys. If you buy something, you're gonna like, you're gonna have like 50 things, 50 options to choose from. It's just getting out of control. But I wanna be able to adapt and and make it make them useful, you know, over time. All right, so now this is what they look like. And now I wanna show you how to assign them. So for example, the, the CRCs, Close Reading Companions, you don't necessarily want to assign every single page because that's a little overwhelming, especially if you're gonna be doing, making new assignments every single day or every single week. What you'll do instead is take the slide that you want from this slide deck and you'll copy and paste it into its own deck, okay? So I would do something like, actually, let me see. I think I found an easier way to do it once. So run file, make a copy of selected slides. Okay, so say I just want to assign slide number five. I'm going to do file, make a copy, selected slides. Let's see if I can zoom in here for you. Okay, when I do that, I'm going to say, what is this? Unit one, week one, lesson two. Okay, I'm going to save it wherever it belongs in my drive. Okay, and now it's going to be its own file. I'm sorry, my computer is so slow. All right, so it's going to be alone there, and then you'll just assign them this Google Slides file instead of the whole deck for the unit. 
And you can do that for any of these other resources, assign a week at a time, a day at a time. And one other thing is, oh my gosh, look how slow my computer is. Oh, you know what? Let me try something. Yeah, no, okay, it worked. It was just my computer lagging. So another thing is that I wanted to show you is you might be making something like a digital assignment board where if you watch my design with me videos or if you're in my Google Classroom course um, or if you're on the Bitmoji craze and you're making the virtual rooms, you have learned how to make, how to kind of in, make these slide decks that you push out to students that contain all of their resources for the day or all of their resources for the week, however you choose to organize it. I really like having this digital assignment board here because I just have the, the icons for each lesson. So like the reading lesson is gonna be on slide four. Here's where I would embed my video lesson to the kids. And then I would say, okay, complete slides number five and number six or whatever. Now, when you're creating sort of, let's call this like a landing, landing resource where everything is like a catch-all for everything you are only able to select a specific slide size for your whole deck so when you are setting it up i like to do 11 by eight and a half so i do page setup see 11 by eight and a half the horizontal spread and then i start to design and throw my resources into this now, what happens, it's tricky because not every resource is 11 by eight and a half, right? This is the opposite, it's a vertical resource. So if I were to take this slide and just copy it and paste it here, then it would warp, it wouldn't look good. Um, and actually, let me show you how to do that for those of you that don't know how to copy paste. Say I wanna assign this slide four, I'm gonna do Command C or Control C, just copying it or edit copy. And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna just paste it, see? And then I'm going to just keep original cells and it goes, it fits beautifully right in there. Now, you can't do that with an eight and a half by 11. So the a solution, if you were to put everything together is to save the image. So instead of making a copy and starting a new deck, all you would do is select the slide you want. Now this is a little more work, but some of us I know are loving this kind of work right now, like getting all these decks created. This is like, this is my territory. I can do this all day. I do do this all day. So file, we're going to download this page as a PNG, okay, as an image. First, actually what I'm gonna do is get all this busy work off of there. So I just want the CRC file download the PNG, which is like a better quality image file than a JPEG. Then I'm gonna go over to my digital assignment board and I'm just going to drag it from either down here or your downloads folder, wherever that downloaded to Watch, drag it and drop it. And it's already, at least on my computer, the perfect size. See, it goes, it layers perfectly onto my 11 by eight and a half slide. And then I have this, you know, dead space right here. Uh, so what I did was I just put a rectangle, my Bitmoji, and then a cute little checklist for the kids to check off. You don't even need this, frankly. You could in type directions or how, they, how you want them to complete this page, embed a video of you teaching this page or whatever. Once you've got your resource in there, then you layer over your text boxes or like I like to do tables instead of text boxes. And then any of your movable elements down here at the bottom, you just kind of get it ready for them. And then it looks like that. Doesn't that look so fun? Okay, if this is like, no, I don't wanna do a whole digital assignment board because I'm already drowning as it is, then just assign via Google Slides, just as an assignment. And when you're in Google Classroom, it's very easy to attach a resource that's on your drive as an assignment. So you would literally, remember we saved this to our drive, we even saved a copy of it, the specific slide we wanted, this guy. So when you're in Google Classroom and you're making your assignment, attach, find it on Drive, there you go, bam. 
and then you choose make a copy for each student and each student gets their own copy. Now, and I have a lot of tutorials on this already, so if you need more instructions around Google Classroom, just let me know. I have like YouTube videos that I can send you. But let's talk about the other learning management systems like Schoology or Canvas um, or Seesaw or any of those fun things, Microsoft Teams. Now, you have two options here. Let's start with Microsoft Teams. You all use PowerPoint. So what you do is you would open up your Google Slides resource that's digital from me, because remember they're all, all the digital, digital ones are in Google Slides, yes? Go to File, Download, Microsoft PowerPoint, okay? And this will convert this whole file to a PowerPoint and the text boxes will preserve and everything and it'll be ready to go. And then you can link that push that out to your students. Now those of you using Schoology or Canvas or any one of the one of ones of those learning management systems where it's basically just a space for you to like link all your resources to house all of your lessons and you know on your pages and whatnot. You can either choose to hyperlink the Google Slides presentation or you can upload and attach the PowerPoint. Okay? So why would you use one or the other? Well, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm not entirely sure about kids using Google products, slides, forms without a login. So if they don't have a login, um, test that out. Try to see, like, like log out of your Google accounts completely and then see if you can still access and complete this, like see what happens. Otherwise, you would just attach the PowerPoint, they would open that up and then complete it, reattach it, okay? The benefit of Google Slides is they don't have to reattach things, typically. Um, they would share with you, but then again, I don't know, it's all confusing for kids, right? But we got this, guys. After a while, like I said, the kids and ourselves will be tech wizards and we'll figure out how to make this as seamless as we can okay now um, when another thing I wanted to share what was it? oh yeah copy link so if you're not using Google, Google Classroom which makes a copy for each student automatically but you'd like to send a copy of one of these and you don't want people to edit your original you just go up to your URL up here so let's see if I can zoom in over here for you all without having it look weird. Okay. Can I do that? Yep. 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 Okay. So I'm going to manipulate this URL. See where it starts with edit slash edit. I'm going to take all of that. I'm going to erase it because I don't want to copy. I don't want to edit. Sorry. I'm going to write copy. Okay. And I'm going to click enter and watch what happens. Would you like to make a copy? Yes. So now this guy up here, that's what you give your students, your parents, your colleagues, whoever you want to share a copy with so that they don't edit your original. That's the link you give them. If they cannot access it, they're like, hey, it's asking me, telling me I need to request access. Remember that whatever you share with others on Google-based products, you need to first specify that you're okay with sharing. So what you do for that is you open up your share settings here, this yellow button, and you're going to turn on link sharing. So even though you're not giving them, let's give my, my computer a moment. Okay, so you're going to change it so that it's not restricted, but e even though you're not giving them this one, right? You're giving them that forced copy. It's called a forced copy link. Um, you're still going to have to turn on these permissions just so that they are able to then make a copy. Okay. So I'm going to turn this back to restricted because this is just a play around copy. All right. So that is, that's essentially how it works on any learning management system like Schoology or Canvas or like Blackboard. Blackboard is what I use for my master's program. It's all the same. It's just pages where you go and you 
include attachments or hyperlinks where you're telling the kids what they want, what you want them to do. Okay, so you can attach the PowerPoint or give them the link. On Seesaw, you can actually, there's an integration. Let me turn this back on me. There's an integration on Seesaw where it says, you know, I think it says like attach something from Google Drive. So you can push it out to your students that way if you have something on Drive, right? Like any of these resources. Or what my friend Gail does is she takes the actual PDF version of my resource and uploads the PDF and then just deletes the pages she doesn't want. The problem with Seesaw, and I don't know if they're going to update this or if they have already, or, is that the text boxes that I put on the digital versions that say like type here or it's just like a blue box, those become flattened when you put them in Seesaw. The kids have to insert the text box and begin typing, okay? So like, for example, what Gail has shown us in the past with her live video in this group is that she loads it, it, set, it has the little box, it says type here, super annoying. The kids just take a text box, drag it over, and type. So that is the, the way that it works on Seesaw. And as of right now, there's no way around that. Like, um, for some reason, yeah, it just flattens everything. So even like these little guys down here will become flat and the kids won't actually be able to move them. They have to create their own little shape. Okay. Um, when I was talking about that just now, it made me think of something else to share. As I'm moving forward, so like I said, I started these digital versions in March. It was like, quick, all hands on deck, everyone help, we're all panicking, let's get these digitized as quickly as possible. When I was doing it back then, I didn't, I didn't really know the best ways yet, so I now no longer use, in my newer things that I'm digitizing, I'm no longer using text boxes, I'm using tables, and I'm not putting type here. So I did include instructions on how to remove the type here in the text boxes. So if they are using it on Seesaw, you don't want that to be there. Or if you're like, it's, if it's really annoying for the kids to have to start, like delete this first before they start typing, then there's a way to remove that from the whole file easily. You go to edit, find and replace, Find type here, and we're going to replace it with nothing. We want it to be blank, okay? Replace. So replace all. And then it takes it away from the whole file, okay? So then what the kids do is they just click, start typing. All right. So that I think is it for today. Let me know if you have any other questions, if you're using a specific learning management system other than Schoology, Canvas, Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, Seesaw, let me know and I can do a little bit of research and see what I can do to help out. But to recap, everything is is almost everything is digital. All my main benchmark resources are digital. The digital versions are free updates to anybody who already owns them. To access, just re-download from your account, either on TPT or on m, &M. And that's it. <laughs> that's all. And then there's a sale today, so don't miss out. Thanks, everybody. I'll talk to you soon, and feel free to join me tomorrow on my Facebook page, not in this group, but on the actual Markers and Minions Facebook page. I'm going to be doing my next Design With Me episode, which I've been doing on Wednesdays. They're super fun. I basically teach how to make fun teaching resources. So tomorrow I'm going to teach everybody how to make um, interactive math slides with like movable pieces and how to make a Google Form self-grading quiz. All right. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later.